is full spectrum opposition. Wow, very well said. In fact, I want to get you back on on the whole uh, you know, fake gay agenda versus <laughs> you, know, you know real freedom out there, and then also. Uh, Absolutely. I know you're an expert separately, and, and, and a lot of times they're on national news and quoted in newspapers about what happened to Japanese Americans and others. People forget about that, that even in the Rand Corporation documents and others that I've seen, they admit that the years of captivity and slave labor of the super hardworking, smart Japanese Americans, many of them fourth, fifth generation, uh, who were scooped up and enslaved while their sons fought in Europe uh, uh, valiantly, what, has now become the model of how to round people up. In fact, how they're gonna use city buses to come pick up the political dissidents this time, how they're gonna control the cities. Uh, the Japanese in this country were the model of that. Yes, we were the beta test. And uh, this there's a direct historical connection between what you just described and the FEMA network today. It's not metaphorical, it's literal, it's political, the funding sources, the administrative level, it's, it's very much consistent. And uh, the bad news is that it's far, far more extensive than it was during World War II. And this time around, it's aimed directly at all Americans, regardless of your race, ethnicity, gender, and even social class. And that'll include even a lot of these professors who are smirking about some of these issues now. Maybe it'll take a few more to be beaten down in the street before they come to their senses. That's right. A lot of professors now are getting beat up for no reason on the street by the police. It's really good. It's a crazed system we're entering. Where do you want to begin? Because you're very eloquent and, uh, again, understand the scientific technicals of this. You know, pretty much trained in this system. Uh, well, let's start on a positive note and then degenerate from there. Uh, just recently, a team of researchers at the University of California, Davis, came out with a uh, a very important report in the uh, an academic journal, Environmental Health Perspectives. It's available online in PDF form, and it talks about uh, the hazards of pesticides, especially uh, the hazards uh, to um, pregnant women and uh, young children. Autism. Exactly, exactly. You, you speak of this all the time, and, and many of your fine guests speak to this issue as well. So the University of California, Davis, uh, does do some incredible research. That's one part of it. But uh, in more recent times, they've gone over into the dark side. And uh, it did not bode well for us when uh, big sister Janet DiPolitano showed up as the president of the UC system directly after the, uh, her, her reign at the Department of Homeland Security. This is uh, the revelation of the method, so to speak. And uh, I've also heard from colleagues and friends rumors that her real function in the sitting in the seat of uh, the presidency of the University of California is to uh, rule as a governor of uh, FEMA region number 10. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, but true. And uh, this is what... Uh, That's bombshell. Your... Let's stop right there. Again, we have a sure, prestigious... Certainly. Uh, you know, top professor on right now, political Thank science, you, you name it. No, it's, it's true. I mean, yeah, mainstream you. media says you're, uh, I, I mean, you are prestigious and prolific, saying you have sources in the university that are saying the word is this is really her cover to be governor of FEMA Region 10. Uh, obviously, the plum yes. of the West Coast. Oh, my gosh. She is a regional governor. Uh, uh, tell us more about what you were told. She is a proconsul, absolutely. Well, she has no academic credentials. I believe she... Um, has a law degree from the University of Virginia, which is one of the better law schools. But she has no uh, administrative or academic uh, credentials that, I, that I'm aware of. Um, so what else can we infer um, that she is here for, for nefarious purposes? Um, this part is speculative. I'll preface whatever I'm saying that's speculative with, with, with this caveat. But... Uh, the uh, University of California has a pension fund that's worth about 41 to 45 billion dollars. That's just the UC system and public institutions across the country. I'm sure it's it's much much more than that. Anyway, uh, you can imagine that there are, there are tons of um, uh, wolves out there. Wolves of Wall Street was an awful movie, by the way. Uh, are just looking at their chops, ready to get a hold of it, and and they're going to be very, a lot of really smart people. You know, we have MDs, we have a medical school, we have we have a law school, we have, uh, you know, the usual run of PhDs and whatnot, are going to be very, very angry. And they have resources in order to combat uh, or to fight back um, the theft of their pension. And you speak to this issue 
uh, quite often. I think this is this is the next plum. That, oh, yeah, um, they're getting UT ready to, to take their pensions as well. So all these people that have gone along with this, you know, they're going to be the last to get their throats slit. That's exactly it. It's the... Uh, we're um, verging on the night of the, the long knives. By the way, uh, the predecessor to Janet DiPolitano is a guy named Mark Udoff. Uh, just prior to coming to the University of California as president, he guess what? He was president of the University of Texas. Oh. So they, these people rotate in and out. And after they've done their job, they kind of slink away. And they probably get jobs at the Ford Foundation. Again, it's the foundations, again, which are the administrative uh, and and uh, funding sources for uh, much of the yeah. Let's start government. from the top because you're an expert in this and one of their scholars. And mm -hmm. and, and so let's uh, we should get Francis Boyle back on too. He he actually went through their secret Henry Kissinger training level for global governance and then exposed them from yeah. the inside at Harvard. And then and then the same thing with some of the other people we've had on from the actual meetings where you're right. actually you know given this intel. Uh, so break down maybe from the top of the foundation but, pyramid for us and then tie it into the social engineering. Before I go on, Francis Boyle is a really good example. This is directed to my my colleagues in the in the higher education field, my fellow professors. Francis Boyle is a great example of someone who was tempted by the system, who was tapped, and was slated to become one of these uh, functionaries, these proconsuls for the foundations, but he refused that. Instead, he decided to uh, pursue the moral and ethical course. Anyway, by the way, you're about talking about a, a, a imperial legate for those that don't know in history who, who literally speak, uh, you know, as the mouth of the system, uh, who are really viceroys or governors. And that's actually what Henry Kissinger and others have called themselves, Zbigniew Brzezinski. <laughs> and, and he was tapped for that and basically turned it down. Obviously, Janet Napolitano and others didn't and that's how this system really works and that's why the political class goes along with it because they want to be governors they want to be sub governors exactly. of this new global system and it, but but if we expose it it's over for them it is and you know what this process begins at the undergraduate level it begins they lead institutions of higher education and uh, what i've been discovering uh recently this is bombshell information as well uh this this is being coordinated by so-called student services there's been an incredible infusion of funding and hiring of these uh, these weasels who are uh, catering to students in the guise of student activism, whatever single issue that they are involved with, and find out which among them are the sleaziest. Then they go to these student leadership conferences, and there they learn neurolinguistic programming and the Delphi technique. And from there they observe, and these people go up. Uh, uh, rise through the system, and eventually they they might become the president of the University of California system. Unbelievable! So this, is, this is why it is so important that those of us who who teach are aware of this new world order curriculum, the theory and practice. And this is not being addressed in academia at this point. It is my purpose, my single singular purpose, professional purpose. To bring this into the, uh, the standard curriculum, so it almost becomes um, a, a cliche. It's going to be so, and, and I, I believe this can happen because this is a, a really, really receptive generation. who are scratching their heads. They're learning obsolete forms of knowledge, information, so-called theory with a capital T, which also came out of the uh, foundations. It came out of uh, institutions like Yale. This is why people are fleeing from the humanities, because there is absolutely no relevance to their lives. They don't even read fiction or literature. They read theory about lecture, uh, literature and short stories and poetry. Uh, well, that's and, right. And, and, that's intentional, and by the way. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the big foundations, as you know, admit that they have to take the, you know, the true critical thinking out, the love of history, the love of the humanities, and make it synthetic and fake so that... Uh, basically those systems die just like they infiltrated the media and the press bought it off to destroy it to just get rid of it and now literally have robots that just write press releases that's the program that's the plan give people obsolete degrees so they can implode the colleges after they've helped sell the people out and just create corporate technical schools uh, that literally just uh, uh, create technicians, very small groups of managers to then manage the system. This is the destruction of the Renaissance, the destruction of the love of art, 
this is the evisceration uh, of uh, people being complex lovers of knowledge because a complex lover of knowledge is going to recognize the tyranny and is not going to go along with it. That's exactly right. This, uh, these are the specialists that you refer to it, uh, as the technocracy. Uh, a lot of them at this point are, are coming from Asia. They have absolutely no knowledge, historical awareness uh, of this process. So this is part of my job to educate them. Uh, currently, they're bringing in um, large numbers of people from mainland China at the undergraduate level, and they're paying premium fees. Uh, I had one student who um, finished two years at UC Davis um, from Vietnam, and it's not a wealthy country. Yet over two years, uh, her family spent uh, $200,000 in order to send her to the University of California. Um, wow. Yeah, and uh, at the same time, as, as uh, we've been noting over the last few days, uh, the larger master plan, they have a name for it. It's called uh, the 2020 Initiative. Yes. This is the UC Davis. Uh, and the plan there is to bring large numbers of um, illegal aliens who are now teenagers, but in a few years will be undergraduates, uh, barely literate, uh, unschooled in, in American political culture and our rich heritage of freedom, democracy, individual liberty, and uh, constitutional guarantees, who will be the next uh, generation of CPS workers um, and uh, emissaries for the larger welfare state. Unbelievable. And I forget his name. We had him on about two years ago. But even liberal, real liberal members of, of the Labor Party and others have come on the show and admitted, no, we brought immigrants in over the last 20 years from the former Soviet Union and they've made them the police and the CPS workers, and they're now just disappearing kids. They will do whatever they're told, and a lot of them were brought in as teenagers, and it turns out the model they pulled in England and the UK, I'm getting chills right now, literally, folks, is now the model here. This is so creepy. This is the domestic national security force just as big, just as strong as our military that they're bringing in. And again, I have nothing against these young, poor kids. What are they going to think being brought in at 15, 14? The government gives them everything, just like the old Soviet Union used to take the orphans and make them be the tax police. This is literally an authoritarian model that comes right out of the old Soviet Union, This is, or, or right out of Nazi Germany. Hitler Youth, I mean, this is not a joke. It's being rolled out right as we speak. There's another dimension to this as well with the large numbers of uh, younger undergraduates that are being... Uh, cultivated uh, for this larger welfare state system. And that is uh, ROTC. Um, I have a lot of students who can't make it financially and uh, through the undergraduate uh, uh, degree program. So they have to um, sign up for ROTC, Reserve Officer Training Corps, in order to pay for their tuition and, and the books. So as you know, uh, ROTC on these uh, public, uh, at these public institutions um, are being trained to see the American public, the so-called civilians, as, as the enemy, as the, as the major threat. So you have that dimension as well. Well, you're absolutely this is, right. This is the Department of Defense. Wow, absolutely. In fact, while you were saying that, I was on the button off air saying, pull up the New York Times about the preparations for civil collapse just to back up everything you're saying. Please continue. Certainly, yeah. And... Um, a lot of the uh, young people are used to the uh, El Jefe system of, of governance as opposed to uh, the Republican forms with a small r. Uh, they're not used to our political culture and they'll, um, you know, I think, uh, do about anything in order to uh, get over in society. Um, however, this is not unique to <laughs> um, immigrant students as well. People of, of four or five generations have... Um, almost completely lost touch with our political traditions. Well, I was about to say, as bad as some of these dregs that they're bringing in on purpose so they can be malleable are, compared to a lot of slovenly Americans, I don't care what color they are, it's just, it's already so bad, it's, it's, just, it's, it's, it's insane. And, and I want to come back and talk as a, a political scientist where you think this is going, Professor, and ways to stop it. Because they're going to exploit these people like nobody else. How, how do you reach out to them? How are you being successful doing that? 
We're on the march. And are you being persecuted for it? We're going to ask him that. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network.